So today we're working on the 944. One of the issues we're having is the fuel gauge. Even when it's completely full, the gauge never seems to read over three quarters. The rest of the gauges seem to be working fine. I've changed some of the indicator bulbs in the dash to LED. You can see over here on the brake fluid, there was one that I didn't change. And you can see it's brighter on the right side, but not on the left. So I got a, a few more red LEDs. They were from Super Bright LEDs. And I'll leave a link on that and show you the quantities you need for each one. I also included parking lights, so that's nice and bright. Hit the high beams, that's a nice blue one there as well. So, so the first thing we're gonna do is check the sending unit. I had checked the resistance on it when I had it out of the car when I was doing some other work on the fuel lines. And it seemed like it was responding as I would expect. So with an ohm meter, if you check these two pins on the right, there's a chart on Clark's Garage that'll give you the resistance readings. Right there I'm seeing 2.9 ohms, which is pretty close. I think it says 2.8 ohms for a full tank. So it's right there, and obviously the gauge on the dash was not reading anywhere near close to full. So I think that tells me the sending unit is okay. It's responding as it should. So to get the gauge cluster out, you need to take the steering wheel off, pull this out. Then you need a 24 millimeter socket. It's slightly offset, so a wobble extension is helpful. Within the vent area, you have two right here, and one over on this side. And then you just have two screws on either side of the cluster. Actually, I'm just noticing these are open slots, so I think I can loosen those and leave them in place and just, yeah, slide it right out. So then you have the wire connectors, and we'll see if we can... So these have these little tabs that you have to push towards the outside of the connector. So you can see that one went that one I pushed up, and that one I pushed down. That's two. And then there's one on the other side here. Okay. And with that, our cluster is out. And we can go put it on the bench and take a closer look at it. So we're looking at the back of the cluster now and it's upside down. So one thing is these little football shaped things. We're going to pull those out and clean the contacts. You can see these are the LEDs that I've put in here. Uh, I think that one's the parking lights. I'm not sure what that one is. Uh, this was the brake that only one side was done so I need to do that one. And we'll check through any of the others that we had left. Uh, we got a couple of these footballs here. Uh, this resistor. A lot of these things have like a crimp fitting that is not soldered. So we're going to take a good close look at those and make sure the contacts are clean. So with a 7 millimeter, we can take... These little brass nuts off of here. It was at this point that I failed to record what I did here, but essentially it involves just removing each of those football shaped connectors and cleaning them thoroughly. Clean all the contacts, clean the brass nuts. I used isopropyl alcohol, but you can use your favorite solvent or a Scotch Bright pad or anything like that. Put them all back in place and snug them up 
and that makes the connection uh, a lot lower resistance, which is ultimately what helped the gauge read higher. Still a hair below, but that's pretty good. All right, we just filled it up. Let's see where it goes. Well, it didn't really move much. It's right up to the same spot it was. Still a lot better than it was before. Well, I'm gonna give it one more shot. So what I'm thinking is let's first test the system. It's supposed to be 2.8 ohms at the top. I've got four 10 ohm resistors in parallel that I'm gonna put across here. So that should be two and a half ohms. It's reading pretty good, 0.1 ohms across the leads, 2.6 plus the leads. So it's right at 2.5. I first tried it with a set of alligator clips and I questioned that because there's some resistance in these clips. So let's just check those real quick. And look, that's one and a half ohms on those clip leads. So best not to use those. And we'll take the resistors and put them right into the connector. All right, let's see what we get. That's about as high as I've seen it. Might be worth trying to clean out the sender just to see if we can remove a little more resistance out of that and, and get this right as high as we possibly can. So to take the fuel sender out, you just have to take these two hoses off of here. One of them's a return and one's a vent. The smaller one's coming, but the big one's gonna fight me. It'll let the fuel drain out of this, I can hear it. I think that's about it. So we got about 66 ohms at the bottom. 2.7. I don't know if we're going to get much better than that. 2.8. Since it's out anyway, we might as well open it up and see if we can clean the contacts a little bit. A 6 is a little loose on there. A 5 doesn't fit. I grabbed a 7.32nd and that seems to fit a little bit better. Get this off. There's another nut on there. So that's it. That's what I got. You can see there's some very thin wipers in there. I don't know if that's uh, coming through on the camera. Let's just see if that seemed to do anything. Yeah, it's worse than before. Great. Oh, look at that. That worked. So what I did, I suspected that the crimp down inside here might be a little bit of a bad connection. So. I held this end of the terminal up to the vise, put a nail set in there, and just tapped it a few times with a hammer. Figured that would tighten it up a little bit, and it looks like that may have helped. So I'm not going to mess with this anymore, because if I do, I'm probably going to break it, and then I'll be buying a new one. So I think it's time to put this one back in. Okay, there's a tab right in line with that wire. So, yeah, I'm down to 2.2 ohms. I'm hoping that's going to work. All right, let's see. Right up to the top. I call that a success.